to another vlog here on the World of Coasters. It is the first Halloween vlog. We're here, and you can probably tell by the noise, we're here at Chesterton World of Adventures, right by Dragon's Fury at the moment. Today I'm here with Louise, and we're here with Lewis. Good for them. I'm here with Lewis as well. Why are they laughing at me? They're just fans of the channel. Um, we're going to start the day off straight away with a ride on Dragon's Fury, depending on what the queue's like. Oh no, it's really long. So first ride of the day is Dragon's Fury, and I think Louise has made a boo-boo here. Not a five minute queue though, that's, that's more like a half an hour queue. So anyway, as I was saying, we're here for Halloween this year, aren't we though? We came here last week, uh, before Halloween started. The park is open 10 till 7 tonight. The same Halloween really works. No, that's how they say it. Halloween, because it's got a zoo. How? Like literally, that oh took too long for you to realise. Um, so anyway, like I say, they've got three or four uh, scare attractions here, including the Creepy Caves, which me and Louise never got to do last year. Uh, I, can't, I think they hadn't set it up by the time we came last year, but we did the one in um, World Asia, which has changed this year to this like spider investigation one. It contains a lot of spiders. But yeah, probably lots of real spiders. Creepy Caves do. But uh, yeah, we're basically going to be here this week, we're going to Fort Park Sprite Nights next week, and then the week after that we're going to be going to uh, a few parks in De uh, Devon, and then we're going to be off to Oak Park. Very busy. After a 20 minute queue, we got on Dragon's Fury and a uh, great start after the day to be honest. They had a small little delay, one of the harnesses on one of the trains weren't working but it was a quick stop. They were running really quick. That's probably the fastest I've ever seen that queue going, wouldn't you say? Like I've not, like we, we were, you saw where we were in the queue just before the gift shop, uh, the sweet shop. And oh my god! What's that? Oh, oh they've got a show. So here's one of the shows that we run today. We have to get a map and see when the shows are. But yeah, like I say, I've never seen Dragon's Fury running so well, so hopefully that's a, a sign of what's to come. Uh, Crowd-wise, it's quite quiet today. Uh, Vampire's got a half an hour queue. Uh, we're going over to Tomb Blaster now, and then probably go on Dragon's Fury. Over here, we've got Ramus's Revenge, which uh, is Ramus's Revenge running. This is uh, obviously being removed at the end of this season. 3rd of November, this is coming out. And no one knows the manufacturer, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Zampala bounce tower that's going to replace uh, replace this. It's going to be quite heavily themed by the looks of it. So basically, you're going to have the bounce tower here that's going to have a crocodile theme to it. I'll put the plans up alongside it. And then over here, they're going to have the, log fl the, the miniature log flume that was found at Weymouth um, <laughs> Sea Life Centre. So now, Weymouth rides, you've got the lumberjack jump in the tugboat at Fort Park in uh, Old Town, and that little crocodile log flume, which is only going to be about four metres high, um, here, right there, so it's going to be like crocodile themed. Hopefully that means they're re-themed Tomb Blaster. Right, so Lewis was saying uh, he found the page is actually uh, selling uh, Black Buccaneer is also going, so Black Buccaneer and Ramesses Revenge, because they sell them second hand, or Ramesses Revenge is a Huss Rides top spin, and uh, to be honest, we saw the one in Wallaby, didn't we Lewis? Yeah. And it spent most of its time broken, in fact every time I've seen those, they're broken. Oh, they got music! Oh! They got music! It sounds like they've changed the soundtrack. Is that just uh, a new soundtrack? Oh, oh, I love the soundtrack for this. Like, to be honest, with the renovations that are going to be going on, obviously with Ramesses Revenge removal and the pl uh, placement of the new log flume, the miniature log flume over there, I'd like to see them put some money into Tomb Blaster. Yes. Tomb Blaster yes. is a classic Chessington ride. I grew up riding it when it was obviously Forbidden Tomb and Terror Tomb. It was much better. But I'm happy for them to keep the blasters and all that as long as they put some money into it because ever since they put the new sensors in, it's just terrible. It does look like it's going to be Walker. So uh, here we got all the old scenery. It used to have Abdab sitting in there when it was Terra Tomb. 
as you can see, it's a really well themed ride. Sort of the old the red coming through still on the oh yeah this is from the old original fifth dimension ride and above here if you look if you look above the ceiling you can see the old ceiling tiles from uh, fifth dimension they just put this above it so there, there you go there's no queue it's literally getting more cold guys your utility vehicle will shortly be arriving for the next journey stand clear vehicle approaching some footage on Tomb Blaster thanks it, to our very own Louise. But it did not focus a lot. It's because so. it was dark. When the camera can't focus on anything, it just goes through the whole focus spectrum trying to grab something. But yeah, I, like, I smashed Lewis for starters. No, 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 no. For your pleasure of seeing the ride, I lost <laughs> because Louise's head was in the way. 24,000, 36,000. We're going again later to settle it. We're going over to Tiger Rock now, which opens in about 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy that one. It's my guilty pleasure, but it's so broken. There are so many like, oh, like sound elements. That's a music that kept like, stopping. No, it did that last yeah. week. I just hope, I hope to God, they turn around when they're refurbishing the rest of the Big Kingdom. They go, let's put some money into Tomb Blaster because it used to be an amazing ride. And uh, you, you can still see well. you can still see a lot of the original theming, but it's just all falling apart and going now. Right, so we're now heading around to last year's new area, the refurbished Mr. Keys, which is now the land of the tiger, uh, where you've got the tiger enclosure all over the area. So basically they took out Peking Heights, and about where we are now is where Samurai used to sit. So here's last year's investment. And I do like what they've done, like this rock face is amazing, but I wish they did what they had before where it was uh, rock work all the way around the hill so you couldn't see any of the supports or the show building for uh, Tomb Blaster. I understand that cost a lot, but you know, it's when, we, when you go to places like Europa Park and all that, it just seems very half, half done, half baked, let's say. So this is our next ride, you don't get too wet on this one, the classic Mac log flume. I actually forgot to mention, um, since the vlog in Legoland where we were all together and we said we were going to go to Europa Park, oh my god there's a cat up there. Wow, it looks very proud of I think they put their food up there because they're always up there now. But yeah, as I was saying, last time we were all together in Legoland, uh, we had to speak of going to Europa Park. And I can now 100% confirm we're going to Europa Park. You said that earlier. The thing, yeah. the thing is, right, this vlog will probably be going up around Halloween. And uh, we're going on the, at the beginning of November for the last three days of the season. And I'm so excited. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to that. They have a Halloween event there called Traumatica which runs on one of the nights we're there. 
Uh, park shuts at 8 p.m. and then for, um, up until like 11 o'clock they have that running. But I don't know where we're going to go so it's 34 euros ahead. And uh, we're going to be travelling from that day. We're going to be out quite early. So here's where the old dragon used to be. And as you can see, they just covered it up. Absolutely beautiful work here. And then they've just covered it up. And you can still kind of see it, but it's just a shame to see. Because this rock work used to go all the way up around there and cover all of this up. We're going on Tiger Rock now. Not going to be able to film on this one for A, I'll get my camera wet. And B, you know, I love film on this one. <laughs> Well, so we're in the queue for Tiger Rock now. It's going to be walk on again. Absolutely no queue. Another classic from when the park first opened. Obviously, it was Dragon River back then. And they have their music really loud today. Right, so we've just come off of Tiger Rock, which is behind me here. Um, we got quite soaked, didn't we? We all crammed into the back of the boat, which probably wasn't the best idea, to be honest. It's an interesting image. It had no weight at the front of the boat, so we just scooped the water up, and Louise was at the front of us and got absolutely soaked in the bag, so I ended up got quite wet as well. Uh, I think now we're going to head round towards Rattlesnake and that sort of direction. Um, it's absolutely dead here. I don't know what time the maze is open. Where is the maze? Okay, so there's Amazing Wild Asia, that's the new spider one, which used to be the uh, Genghis Khan uh, scare maze, which we did last year. Um, there's Creepy Caves, which is down by the Sea Lion Show, and there's a, like, a haunted tree, is that the kiddie one, that's right by um, Room on a Broom. I've never done a maze, um, ever. We'll probably do, we'll probably do the, the two uh, first ones, which was the spider one and the um, Creepy Caves, those are the two more adult ones. The other one's a bit more kid-friendly, so I don't know whether we're going to do that one. It depends, it's, you know. So over here is Mr. Toad's, well, it's not Mr. Toad's Wild Ride anymore. But uh, basically, this is where the new miniature lock flume is going to go over in this half. They're going to be re-diverting the track for this one so it can fit in on this left-hand side. So it's going to be quite interesting. Uh, I know you can probably get one adult to a boat, so we'll be here for the opening day of that with Lewis squeezing in a crocodile boat. So yeah, it looks like this is going to be the area that's going to be re-diverted. So it'll be quite interesting, but that's where I want to see the money. I want to see the money put into Tomb Blaster. I think it's e-stopped. See, this is the problem with Ramis's Revenge. It does a lot of e-stopping. Um, yeah, it looks like it's e-stopped. It would have moved by now. Um, so you can see why they're removing it. There we go. Just while you're having a look around, this is where the old queue line used to go, all the way up that walkway. And then after an incident on Tomb Blaster's raised queue, they. Uh, they got rid of it and barred it off and it's just like a short queue now because no one ever rides it. It used to go along here and used to enter from over here. But yeah, uh, I was going to show you an off-ride POV of this, but yeah, it's broken down. Right, so the rain has started to come down a little bit. We're going over. We're doing Rattlesnake or Scorpion Express, guys? Both. Let's do both. Which one do you want to do first, Lewis? Lewis's choice. Oh. Uh, Scorpion Express. Uh, Scorpion Express. Lewis. Okay, we're going to go over to Scorpion Express. Uh, but yeah, like I say, that was a prime example of Ramis' Revenge at its best. Just doing, like, he does that so often, I wish it wasn't a thing. It's just, I don't know what it is with the safety systems on Huss rides, but they're really over the top. Um, so you can see why they're removing it. We're just coming into what, I think it's still called Mexicana, this area, where they've got the uh, Rattlesnake, which is the Mauer Wild Mouse. We got the, oh, they've changed the name. It's not a... Uh, it's not the vegan anymore. It's not, not, no, it is not dog. They've still got a not dog sign outside, yeah. but they've changed the name of it. Yeah, that changed a couple of months ago. They never, no one was ever in there. That's that's a strange thing. Uh, there's the annual pass hub over there, and we're just going over to the Scorpion Express, which is over here. Right, so as I was saying before, the speakers got really loud. This is one of those rides that I actually think Merlin did a really good job with refurbishing. Like, it had the rock work, but it was falling a bit a bit. And they, they put this facade on the back, and it looks quite good, really, for what they've done. Flying Fish could use some theme, and it's the same layout. But yeah, I like what they've done here. It's not the biggest in the world, just a Mac-powered coaster. 
now because it has got half an hour queue and I can't believe it because they seem to only be running four trains on it today. We're going down to the Burger Kitchen in Wildwood or as I would always call it Transylvania uh, and we're going to have an early lunch because I'm feeling a bit peckish and uh, Lewis needs to buy a box of 20 chicken nuggets. <laughs> Don't you Lewis? Don't expose him. Um, so yeah we're going to go in there we're going to eat lunch in there of course if we're buying stuff we can eat our lunch there. Definitely not try to lose weight for your own but yeah. Oh my god the, oh, what the? Uh, Okay, so uh, that's pretty cool. Hopefully that lights up later on. But yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty awesome. And they say Nemesis can't have green uh, red water. So we're in Market Square now, where the old faithful pizza and pasta is. Won't be visiting there today. The new carousel, which was a couple of seasons old. I do like what they've done with it, but in my opinion, the old carousel which was behind the Chesterton gift shop was my childhood and they just ripped it out. So I was saying to Lewis uh, while we were waiting up by Tiger Rock, I said the thing is with this park is because I came here growing up, they've changed so much over the years that it's kind of starting to feel like it's not the original park I grew up with, like Bubbleworks is gone, the original carousel is gone. Uh, what else? Toyland's gone. That used that's where um, the Gruffalo stage is and all that now. Hocus Pocus is gone. I grew up with these rides. I do like what they're doing with it, but at the same time I don't. I like the original Chessington World of Adventures where it was Transylvania and all that. Um, queue times at the moment are starting to die off a bit, so we might be able to go on. Um, might be able to go on Vampire after lunch. But uh, we're going around to Wild Woods at the moment, which is just past Sea Storm here. So here is the queue for the Creepy Caves. Opens from 12 and uh, parks open until 7 today. So this is the entrance and queue. This is apparently really good, so uh, I'm looking forward to doing this one. Obviously, this used to be the walkthrough attraction that had all the uh, reptiles and spiders in. <laughs> So we're in the burger kitchen at the moment, Louise is just sitting down, Lewis is just ordering some chicken nuggets. Uh, this used to be the Count's Cauldron, which used to be a McDonald's, and then it turned into a burger king. See, Louise and Lewis don't remember it being a McDonald's, but I do, so I had to show them pictures. I remember it being a Burger King. Oh, well Lewis remembers it being That's a Burger King. But yeah, this was a McDonald's to begin with, and it's got a lot of the original theme in. But one thing I wanted to show you real quick is I've actually got self-service kiosks now, which I thought was quite cool. If we come down here, just over here, they have the self-service screens now, which uh, you can use your annual pass discount on and everything, which is really cool. Good way of getting served nice and quick. So we were going to go down to the Vampire because it's not a five minute queue, but it's absolutely hammering it down at the moment, so we've decided to come on the Gruffalo ride, and you're taking a shortcut. Yes, no. They've run around without me. Uh, yeah, we're going on the Gruffalo ride. This used to be the absolutely infamous Bubble Works. So yeah, like I was saying, this used to be the Bubble Works. It was Professor Burke's Bubble Works, and then became the Le Imperial Leather Bubble Works, and then became the Gruffalo. It and very nice of you. It does, and it's a good ride, but it's nowhere near as legendary as the Bubble Works. I feel like all of you are explaining about this part today. Ash, I'm, I'm having like a reminiscent time. I'm thinking of the old part when, it used to, when I grew up. I'm only 27. So yeah, we're going to go on the rock alone. I'll probably film on this one for you. And we'll see you on the right. So as I was saying, they've done a good job with this. It's got beautiful theming for the most part. But uh, it's not as good as the bubble works. <laughs>
tidal wave. Oh. Right, so we've just had a ride on the Gruffalo. As I say, great ride, but not as good as the bubble works. And we're now coming around to this park's flagship ride, the Vampire, the old aerodynamic uh, suspended roller coaster. One of only five, I believe, left in the world. It's got the Vacoma trains on it, but this used to be the old entrance. And then they decided to make that the fast track entrance and make the proper entrance over here. Got their blood red balls going. This used to run three trains, but ever since the Smiler accident, they run it on two trains. And uh, there's no real reason for it, because this, uh, this ride has enough blocks for four trains. It has, obviously, Station, which is one block, the first hill, the second hill, the brake run, so you can run you well three trains easily on this, but this is a classic ride. This is uh, hopefully it is it is a classic ride. Hopefully they never get rid of it. I'd like to see Vacoma um, put some of their lap bar trains on this because the overhead restraints are a little bit restricting, and it would just be so much better with lap bar restraints. Advertising the 15 minute queue, and uh, I don't know. It doesn't. I don't know whether it's running at the moment. They might have temporarily stopped it, but hopefully we're we'll getting straight to the station and in and on it. So we've just come off of the Vampire. Good ride on that. I do like that. It's a classic ride. Nothing too intense, but it's a good ride, isn't it? Good coaster. Uh, we're going over to the Creepy Caves now. It's not even like one. Well, it's one o'clock thereabouts, and we're going on our first horror maze of 2019. Horror maze? Yeah, they, they class as a horror maze. Uh, next week we'll be going to uh, Fort Park's Fright Nights, and this is just to ease us in, Lewis. Lewis has never done a horror maze before. This is apparently the best one here. Myself and Louise have been to Tully's. We went there last year, didn't we, Lou? Yeah. And that was our first real Halloween horror event. As I was saying, this is our first, well, that was our first, like, horror mazes. We've done a few parks, but this year we're going to get out to, obviously, this one. We're doing Portland's Park, we're doing Europa Park, and we're doing Fort Park's Fright Nights. We're not going to be able to get to Scarefest, unfortunately. I've got drips all over the camera. Lewis originally wanted to come to Scarefest with us at all Towers, but then we arranged... We are, yeah, but we arranged Europa Park. So this... Yeah. Europa Park would be better. We might do Traumatica. I would like to. It looks amazing. So uh, we can't take you on this, unfortunately. So we'll see you when we get off with Creepy Caves. I'll let you know how it is. Right, so we've, um, we've just come off of the Creepy Caves. And what did you think? I thought it was really good. Yeah, the theme was pretty spot on. Like, it was, I can see why it's won awards. It wasn't the scariest thing in the world, but at the end of the day, Chessington is a family park, so you're not going to really expect, like, poo yourself scared. I mean... We might do it again later with like, Darker. Like, when, we when we went to, um, what's it called, Tully's, Tully's. Right? It was like every corner something happened to you. And oh, they had, yeah. like, holes everywhere in the wall. But I thought that was quite good. The Genghis Khan uh, horror maze is gone now, and that's been replaced by a spider one that I was talking about earlier. Um, we've also got the haunted forest thing over here that's like an outdoorsy one. It's more made for families, this one, but we're going to do this one later when it's dark because it is all outside, and I feel that will add to it a bit more. Overall, that wasn't too bad. We waited about 20 minutes for that, didn't we? About 15, 20 yeah. minutes. Good, good attraction. The Iscare actors were brilliant, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. They were absolutely amazing. Uh, I'd probably
probably say, yeah, young kids might not like that, but it wasn't... <laughs> I'd say, like, 10 plus. Young kids, or... The recommended is 10 plus. Uh, Lewis's first horror maze. I want your in-depth review. In-depth. In-depth, <laughs> In the last room, Lewis, how much poo did... Well, I could sort of tell what was going to happen, and I was hiding behind you two. I was fine, I didn't really see anyone. <laughs> I, don't know. I didn't really see anyone because I was hiding behind you two, but it was great. But the, the, the detail, like, just that you can't yeah. see, like, the str bits, like, string hanging down. Oh, yeah. As you walk through and you touch it, you're like, yeah. One thing I will say is if you're an asthmatic, make sure you've got your pump yeah. in there because the amount of uh, smoke not, used... They do not use haze, it is full on smoke. <laughs> like the full on smoke, like literally, I was struggling to breathe in there. Um, but yeah, what are we doing? Dramatic. Are we going over towards uh, Rattlesnake? Do two blast rings, Lewis needs to smash me still. Sorry, what? You need... <laughs> <laughs> this is a family friendly channel, mate. <laughs> So we're now going on the Rattlesnake, which is a Maui wild mouse ride. Um, these are awesome, these are. This is probably one of the best themed one of, ones of these in the world. Um, I love it. It's, it's a good themed ride, but they do run reduced cars now, so we've probably been waiting a good 20 minutes for this one. Um, probably going to get Lewis in the front and me and Louise in the back. Depends. Last time I didn't let three adults on it. Oh, OK. That'll be new to me. Merlin have gone all out putting uh, bird deterrents in here, so they put these all up on the ceiling. They've stuck these door things on and they put netting on the open exits. You can't really see it well on the camera. But still, the pigeons defy. And uh, yeah, he's sitting here, actually sleeping in it. So uh, they're all, they're, yeah, the there's one over there. They do, they do not care for the netting, they will find their way. We're going back towards, are we going to Safari or later? Should we do Toon Blast and then later Safari, yeah? Yes. So when you come round to Safari, they have flying jumbos over here, which has a 10 minute queue. It's being moved. Yeah, it's being moved it's for the moves, drop tower. So over here is where Chessington use a lot of their park space. Believe it or not, Safari actually takes up the entire footprint of the park. Again, if you look at this park on Google Maps, the Safari takes up most of the area. And to be honest, it needs a bit of TLC. Uh, in the past few years, a lot of the animals, including the flamingos, aren't actually there. And, uh, oh my god. the inside bit just doesn't Yeah, this is a problem. This ride has great potential. Like me and Louise have been on the one at uh, Animal Kingdom, and it bl blows it out of the water, doesn't it? Like, it should do anyway. But this one has potential, it just needs a bit of TLC. Safari ride into Africa. Uh, it says 10 minute queue, but there is absolutely no queue. Oh, actually, there's a tiny queue in the main area. I would have hated to be in that queue. I've never actually been over there. There's a viewing thing over there. Okay, researchers, our satellite show you should be close to seeing some giraffe, or to use their scientific name, Camelopardalus. Six meters, that's 18 feet each. There's always plenty for them to eat as no other animals can reach their heart. Here's some amazing giraffe related facts that might help you with your research. Did you know that giraffe are one of the few animals born with horns? Different animals. You'll probably be able to see some antelope with a white blaze on their faces. These are called flesbos. Once the most abundant antelope species of the African plains, they became an endangered species during the early colonization of South Africa, when they were hunted for skin and meat. The rhino around Safari are white rhino, so-called because of the Afrikaner word white, referring to their white mouths, sounding so similar to the English word white. It's actually got nothing to do with their colour. Male rhino like to be on their own, so they mark out their territory with piles of their own gun to warn off other males. <laughs> That is 
it's probably one of the best rides on the farm we've had in a long time. The animals are out. Really? Yeah. Like, oh, okay, well, compared to last week, me and Louise came here last week with some friends and uh, we went on safari and they were running two cars like they were today, but the driver did not stop. The animals were, the, the animals were out, but no one right. He was zooming through, I think he was going for a speed lap. And I that filmed our, like, our reaction and it was like, oh. It was crazy. Uh, that time, all the animals were, the giraffe were kind of like pushed out as we came past. Uh, but yeah, that was all right. They fixed a few things there, but it's like the final scene in that is so anticlimactic. Um, when you've been on the lights of Catastrophe Canyon on the tra studio tram tour at Disneyland, it's like, well, that's not a lot of water. Uh, we're going to go on the uh, Tomb Blast, something called Laser Raiders. We will go on the jumbos in the dark. In the dark. POV. Uh, anyway, yeah, we're gonna go on those raiders and set our score. Lewis is gonna get smashed again. And if I if I lose, I'm gonna cut this out. This is what I mean when I'm talking about the level of theming that this park once had. This courtyard is all original theming for Tomb Blaster, well, well Forbidden Tomb, Terra Tomb, whatever you want to call it. And it's, it's 360 degrees of immersion, there's no like warehouses or anything you can see. And this is what the park should be and what it was when I grew up around here. So there we go, with the old sign behind the new, I love this. Bit and two. So they've got the extension queue open at the moment uh, for this, which I do like. It's really like reminiscent of Ramesses Revenge uh, old queue before it got ripped out. It's just, it's a really good queue. I like this one because it's like around the courtyard, it's all themed up fully. And uh, oh, they put some, some new posts here. Obviously, they don't want people climbing up. Got a bit to town with their posting. Look, all of these, these weren't here uh, last season or earlier in the year even. See some nice shots of Ramesses Revenge running. Right, Lewis, who's going to win? to the tomb now and let you know how the scoring goes and uh, we'll see you when we get off the ride. Got the old uh, pre-show play. Right, so we've just come off of Tomb Blaster and uh, yeah. he didn't, he lost by a thousand points. A thousand? Yeah, it was, I was 25 and you were 24. A thousand? The whole way round. Uh, got to one room, we're right on the end train. Awful. We're going to have to do it one more time, best, best out of three. So that's two me. You basically won. <laughs> Oh no, okay, we're doing best out of five, we're doing it. Oh yeah, sorry, we were totally, uh, between me and Lewis, but Louise got a million. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're going to go on Tiger Rock again now. <laughs> Can't fit a million on there, it's just no, 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 no. We're going we're gonna to go on Tiger Rock now, and then we're going to start doing some of the horror mazes. So we're just walking back round to Tiger Rock, and then we're going to go into Wild Asia, I think, because we haven't been in there all day. They are also finding parts of North hey, East China as well. The reason why I say this is positive is because they're they only come together for breeding in the wild, so having them in a group is quite unusual. Um, it's the old original Buddha, of which the paint is sadly starting to peel off on this. I did like the original colour on this a lot more. There is like a, a aged copper underneath. Looks like it's coming back through. Back in the queue for a re-ride on Tiger Rock now. Hopefully we walk on again. Um, I love this ride. Do you like this ride? It is one of the better refurbishments they've done, but uh, like I say, when I was a kid and growing up in this place and it had all the rock work along the side and the two giant heads either side, that was when it was, was at its best in my opinion. So yeah, we're going to go on this ride now and I'll catch you when we get off and we're heading over to Royal Asia and the new horror maze, Spiders. <laughs> Tiger Rock, we're heading up towards Wild Asia now through the old pathway which used to lead ages ago, and I mean ages ago, round to where they had dinosaurs. Uh, they had a little dinosaur park back here when I was a kid, but that's long gone. That was well back before even Beano Land was a thing, which of course is where Wild Asia is now. So yeah, as you come around here, like I say, it used to just be like a through path to Beano Land, and before then it never used to be anything. So it's kind of like a little bit of a backstage area, that's why it's a bit like thrown together. But you've got the glamping just up here on the right, 
and uh, we come in at the end of Cobra over here. We've also got the lorikeet. So this is where you go if you are in the glamping, which is on-site accommodation. which was formerly Beano Land. You remember Beano Land? Yeah. Everyone loved Beano Land, but sadly it was only on a 10 year uh, contract, which they didn't renew. So the rides that were here before, which was uh, Billy's Wizard, which is now the Monkey Swinger, and uh, Dodger, Roger Dodger's Dodgems, which is just over there, which actually used to be over here, has been moved and all re-themed. Uh, obviously Cobra came with a new area, which is quite a cool, impressive ride. I can't think of the actual name of these, like the mega discos. I'm not sure, I think it's the Zampala. Monkey Swinger looks like one of those tame chair swing rides, but when they got the water jets on, it's like tidal wave. Anyway, I think we're going over to Tuck Tuck Turmoil, the uh, Dodgem ride here. This is always a good one, it doesn't have too long queue, probably get on it within a cycle or two. So we'll see you when we've been on Tuck Tuck Turmoil. Everyone likes the good old dodgems. But even this one, the female's starting to wear off around here. They've reboarded around it because it looks like some rotten. So we've just come off the Tuxedo Terminal. We were going to go on the Monkey Swinger, but. Uh, they've got the water fans turned on, and this turns into a right super soaker, as you'll soon see when these are on. And then over past Cobra around here, we have the spider um, horror maze over here, which I believe we're going to do after that. So as you can see, with these water jets, it is a bit of a super soaker, this one. And they're quite relentless. Right, so here we are. We're just going to go on the next horror maze, which is another new one for us. Uh, as I believe this one started new last year, but it wasn't in this location. So it's probably got about a 20 minute queue. This is Spiders Untangle the Web of Lies. This isn't as scary as uh, the Creepy Caves, apparently. It only gets two ratings, but we're going to give this one a go, though. So we're going on this horror maze now guys, looks like it's going to have about a 15-20 minute queue. So we'll see you when we get off of it, obviously I can't take cameras on this one, so uh, yeah. This is where the uh, the Genghis Khan right, uh, one was last year, I can't remember the name of it. So we've just come off of the spider uh, maze here. Yeah. Do you know what? We ended up waiting for that one for near on 40 minutes. The queue was really slow on that one. But overall, I've got to commend Chesterton. It was quite a well put together maze. It was better than when we came. Was it not? Yeah, when it was the Genghis Khan one. I can't remember the name of it, but I thought it was quite well put together, to be honest. There was there was some good like scenes, good acting in it, and it was good. It was a good family mode. Like, yeah. It was in no way scary. Like, there was no one jump. There was no point where anyone jumped out at you, really. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say that one's definitely longer than Creepy Caves, but. Um, yeah, Creepy Caves is more intense and doesn't really have as much of a story. Um, <laughs> so there's one more maze for us to do, which is the more family oriented one. It's literally the least scary one here. I think I'll probably do Creepy Caves again before we leave things out. Um, get a few night rides. I really want to do a night ride on uh, Vampire. And I think we'll do a night ride. Like yeah, it's really hanging on. What's that? 13 minutes past. So we have about an hour of dark here. Uh, but Lewis, what did you think of the uh, experience? Bearing in mind it is a family experience. Yeah, for, for younger kids like that, it's, it's good. Because I think next week, at uh, Fort Aww. Park Fright Nights, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, brown stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah like it was good family orientated, but. Yeah. We're just gonna have a chill out now, I might get a drink actually, and then we're gonna go off and head towards another ride. I really want to do the vampire again, but I want to do it again in the night. But it's really quiet and off here now. Q times at the moment, let's have a quick look. Vampire, okay, everything's on a five minute queue now. Everything is on a five minute queue apart from Aramis' Revenge, so let's get Louise's coat and then let's do some re-ride. So we're, we're back, Louise has a coat, my coat. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're going on Dragon's Fury again, where the day started. It, record, it says it's got a 20 minute queue, I call. but uh, yeah, I don't think it is a 20 minute queue. We're talking maybe five minutes. To be honest, all the queues now have really died off. Well, huh? I thought you were saying something then. All the queues have completely died off, so we're probably gonna do this, vampire, do a kind of have a horror mazes, maybe even one of the is his personal favourite ride. Uh, Cobra, yeah, we haven't done Cobra yet today, and uh, see what's going on from there. The park is open until seven tonight. So we just gotta queue through this and then get on Dragon's Fury. Right, so we've just come off of Dragon's Fury and I think we're gonna have a short break now. It's coming up to about half five, still got an hour and a half till park close. It is starting to darken off a bit now. Oh, I think within the next off. half, Sorry, oh yeah. Oh, Louise has selected the next ride. Woo! Lewis has got one not coming. Lewis. So we're going on Mr. Toad's wild car ride, I think it's called. Uh, this has been here since the park like first opened as a theme park. So let's go on this intense B&M Oh. Oh, oh. Here we go. Oh, we have to wait for the green light. Louise is driving us. <coughs> Funny thing is, we've been on this before and Louise sat in the car behind and just is depressed. I think he hates these rides. I don't know why, they're bloody fabulous. They are very vintage. Look, so this has been here since the park's inception really with a wind in the willows theme and I think that's what it's still got now it gives you some nice views and you might even be able to see the construction site or the soon-to-be construction site of um, the new log flume <laughs> so this bit will definitely be re-diverted this will be where the new log flume sits with the entrance just kind of over here uh, to be honest this, this ride is lacking a lot it does have some set pieces but they're very like void and Oh, it's a mouse! Yeah. Right, so here's where the old fountain used to be that went absolutely grim. They've turned it into like a feature for Chessington's Winter Tale, which is their Christmas event. Which, do you reckon we're going to do that this year? Possibly? Not yeah, why not? Anyway, now we're going to go on a ride that none of us have been on. I probably have when I was a child, and uh, I think Lewis is going to love this one. Well, I'm excited for you. I, I am very doing? excited. Uh, we're making it a big reveal, just so you don't get too excited. Are you excited? I don't know whether we're actually allowed on this one. This is a Zampala car ride for tiny truckers. Normally has a really long queue, this doesn't it, though? The tiny truckers. Two adults per. I'll, I'll just watch some cards, alright? I'll oh. record some like shots of them. Come on, Lou! Let's do it! So we're going on tiny truckers, a new ride experience for us. Yeah, I know. Lewis hates these slow rides. He's being really grumpy over there. It's roller coasters on YouTube! Yeah, like I said, for some reason this one gets a really long queue. And been on this as a kid. This ride has been here for an eternity and I remember going on it when this was Toyland. Right, so we're on Tiny Truckers and it's very tiny. I am squeezed in. Here we go. This is not comfy. Like, look, this is a uh, tram. Uh, the ride operator just said to us as well, this car's got a problem with bumping the one in front. She said, I'll try not to let you crash, but it might happen, so. I'm down for that. Here we go. Boring! 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 Can you keep 
Push it in. Steer the wheel now. <laughs> that is the first time I've seen a ride camera like that. Got lovely views of uh, Dragon's Fury up there, and uh, hopefully, we won't bump the black one. Louise is driving. I feel quite cramped in here. Like, I am cramped. Woo! We're going for second lap. Look, it's Mr. Boris. So, you can fit two adults in there. Uh, Lewis, you missed out on the experience. Uh, that was very tight, uh, but actually surprisingly fast. Anyway, we're going around to get a drink now, and then we're going to go over to... Uh, we've got to settle the Tomb Blaster score at some point this evening. Uh, and uh, got a Vampire in the Dark, and we've got one more Haunted Maze to do. So, I've just come over to the... Um, Black Buccaneer, which has actually been sold now, or is in the process of being sold. It's all been dismantled. Uh, it's been down for extended uh, maintenance periods recently, and uh, it'd be a great shame to see this one go, but yeah, it doesn't look like it's returning for the 2020 season. The supports are just over there. You can just make out the top of the uh, sides there, and the ship is still down in its place. Uh, but I think this is part of their long, their mid-term de development plan they showed a few years back, which actually showed this area and the grass area behind it as a new potential coaster site. So I reckon if this is a, you know, in preparation for that, uh, it's a shame to see because, like I say, it's a very well built-in pirate ship. Actually, like it had theming, you can see like the lights down there and they're going through a tunnel. There's, you know, loads of theming in this. It's a shame to see it go. One of the more iconic shots around here, I do love the second lift hill that is on um, Vampire. Uh, this actually was closed off. There's the old ed entrance sign, which they've painted over. You can't get down to it now. Um, but yeah, look, you've got the shot of the side of the uh, Vampire's hill lift. And uh, right around here, you can actually see the Black Buccaneer. It'd be a shame to see it go. They've got it all propped up at the moment, just sitting there. And it's all built into this ca uh, cavern area. But like I say, um, the grassland over there is looking like it's going to be a new coaster site. So I wonder whether this area might be involved in that. sun is setting now quite rapidly. I feel we're going to do the Gruffalo and then we're going to go for a night ride on the one and only Vampire. So we've just walked past the creepy caves and no word of light. It is Walcott. It is so quiet. Everything has no cue. Um, this is the sun it, yeah. and people who are more smart, not us, are getting ready because they got work in school. So are we going on Vampire or Gruffalo? Right, so we are now in the queue for Gruffalo again, and by the time we come out of this ride, it should be dark. Yeah. This is what we're dealing with queue kids was on this Halloween special. Absolutely dead. Let's go on the Gruffalo. No such thing as a Gruffalo. This is my idea of a ride, like no queues. Hopefully full parks like this. I think towards the end of the evening it will be like this. So we come off of the Gruffalo now, and uh, it's got darker. Not totally dark yet, but uh, the lighting has come on. I think we're going on. Are we going to go on the Vampire? Should we go on the Vampire first, and then we make it our last ride? God, oh, look at this. So it's coming up to 6.30 now, so hopefully the queue isn't for, not too long for this. Right, so after this we're going to go on the the fairy one, the, the Haunted Forest. I don't know the name of it, I'll let you know when we get over there. Um, but yeah, this has got a five minute queue, and we just realised it's half six, of course the park shuts in um, half an hour, so we want to get that last maze done. All this amazing lighting and theming, and then you just look over and, oh look, a warehouse. 
Right, so we've just come off of Vampire, and I've got to say, that's been one of the best runs on Vampire I've had in a long time. Like, so good in the dark. When a, when a ride's been running for a long period of time, it's obviously warmed up, the, the grease in the wheels is going, it was running very fast. Oh. And we were only on the fourth row. Yeah. So I wasn't expecting it to be quite that fast running. Anyway, it's now 22, so I think we're going over to the last horror maze of the night. Uh, I, know, I know Lewis isn't particularly looking forward to this one because this is the tamest one, but you will beg for it next week when you're crying. Really? Um, well, if you want to prep me for it, you take me on that again. <laughs> we were going to go over to Cobra, but the thing is we can go on Cobra any time of the year. So this, start, yeah. Um, well, no, we can come back here next year for that. Or we'll probably even come back another time. Uh, but yeah, we'll have a look at this. If it looks like it's going to be fast, we'll do it. If it's got a long queue, probably won't bother. So this is the trickle treat wood. It is a one, a one it's suitable for all ages. Lewis, you won't cry on this one. Right, so we've, we've decided against going on that, mainly because it has what we were told was a half an hour queue, and it does look quite believable. Um, it's the most tame maze here. Uh, it's made for all ages, it's one fright, so I don't think it's going to be that amazing. And chances are we will come back here again. Uh, but other mazes, like the Creepy Caves, has absolutely no queue. As you can see, it's getting proper dark now. Um, we're going over towards Cobra, and then we're going to squeeze Dragon's Fury in at the end. So, a pretty good day as it goes. Probably the only disappointing thing, and Lewis said this earlier, is it would be ideal if they stayed open until say eight because it's another hour. It's only just getting dark. We've had like 20 minutes of this. Um, you know, I understand it's a family park and you know probably kids need to get home and you know people for work. But yeah, at eight o'clock finish would be great. Of course, I've had a brilliant day so far. I've been very impressed by the two horror mazes we have done here, and uh, I'm really excited for next week when we go into Fort Park to do Fright Nights, because that is the first time me and Louise have done Fright Nights and Lewis. Um, ah! That's going to be reaction. cool. The thing is, we like I say, we've done Tully's before, me and Louise, so we kind of know what to expect. I imagine it's going to be that sort of like scare yeah, level um, for like, you know, teenagers, young adults. Um, but here it's a great family atmosphere. Like, if you, if you want to bring a family to an event, this is the one to come to, I think. So here's the potentially last ride of the day. Um, this is Co Brothers Ampala Disco or Jumbo Disco. I don't know what the actual model is called, but this is a good laugh. These ones. Looks like he's going to essentially just be a walk-on. It's literally empty that ride. Um, probably by the time we get to the entrance of the ride, it will be uh, finishing its cycle because it's just about to go over the top now. So it is two minutes to park close. We've just been on Cobra. We're having a very brisk walk. Brisk walk, right? We just jogged half the to, way. To uh, Dragon's Fury. Come on, Lou. You can do it. We've got about a minute and 30 seconds to get there. It's only one. Okay, so here's our last night ride. It's going to be Dragon's Fury. Let's get it. A brisk walk from Cobra. <laughs> Up to you. We made it into the queue. Uh, this will be the last ride of the night. Good fun, this one. Third ride on this, which basically means we've had three rides on Vampire and this one, which is pretty good going. So we started the day off with this, Lou, and now we're ending it with it. Right, so that's it. We've had our final ride and uh, it was vomit inducing. It was the, so sickening. The fuck? Like rocks are better like this, you guys just sit. Yeah, I, <laughs> I know, it's great, isn't it? So it's like an audio book. Maybe we should do that in the future. <laughs> go around just audio book. Well, well it'll be even worse when we go to Fort Park we Fright Nights that, next like, week. Thing, right? right, so I hope you've enjoyed the vlog, guys. Uh, it's been a really good day. I've, I've really enjoyed yeah. it. It's probably been the best to Halloween we've been here for this. Me and Louise have been here a few times. This is your first one? What, Halloween? First Halloween event? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, like I say, uh, we'll be going to Fort Park um, next week for their Fright Nights on Friday. Uh, wow. That will be fun because uh, I imagine the horror mazes are going to be a whole new level of scariness, and Lewis doesn't do scary very well. <laughs>
Um, so yeah, thank you for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And from all of us, we'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye.